Hello and welcome back to the Bankers Leadership Series in association with Walters Kluwer looking at the data challenges faced by financial firms when addressing complex and changing regulatory and reporting requirements. In Chapter 3 we're going to dive deep into the data and find out what the major challenges are for in financial institutions when trying to surface the right data to comply with regulatory demands. So Rajat, I was going to pose the first question to you from your position looking across uh, the financial services uh, industry. What do you think are the biggest data challenges that banks face? For banks, from a user perspective, if, uh, banks spend a lot of time collecting data, cleaning data, validating, reconciling data and producing reports, they don't spend enough time in actually using and analyzing the data. And that, that essentially happens because, because of the data challenges, because of the multiple systems th that don't talk to each other, that are not referenceable, etc. So one of the things that we are seeing, we as banks do across the board, is collect the information so that they can of course use the information to look at it from a historical reporting perspective, which is what regulators are looking at. But what, what they're really trying to do is they're trying to see how can they use this information to help them run their business? Mm. How can they use the information to actually drive their business, to stress test their business, to see where the risks are, where the opportunities are? And so that is, that's the goal. The challenges, of course, remain. It's, it's, a, it's a journey. Um, it's much more difficult for the larger institutions, the multi-product, multi-region uh, institutions, and many of those institutions have been uh, formed through acquisitions, through, uh, it, through, uh, through, essentially the result is that their data, they are just not being able to collect all of the information which is clean, reliable, validated, and something that they can actually uh, use for business decision making. So that, in my view, is the biggest challenge. Investments are going in. Um, it's moving in the right direction. But what's happening is, and I think as was being mentioned earlier, uh, the time and effort that banks have to spend and the costs in meeting with the reporting requirements, they're just not getting enough time to do, to actually use the information uh, and invest resources to get the information in the right way to help them run their businesses. And Richard, so it was interesting, again, from the survey, it said that uh, about 62% said that data quality was actually quite an issue, was the biggest challenge that they faced, followed by data consistency and availability. So obviously we talked a little bit before about data lineage. Um, what, what is your organization doing to improve its data quality? We've been very focused on trying to ensure that data is fit for purpose. We need to be very mindful of the fact that sometimes a piece of data can be used, was, was, was originally intended to be used for a particular purpose. And as in response to, to lots of regulatory reporting demands, um, sometimes it's being used for, for, for an alternative purpose where perhaps it's not, the definition is not quite what was needed. Um, so we, we, we're strong advocates on the need for standardisation. Um, so where we can utilise international standards um, such as the legal entity identifier for instance and and various other identifiers that are being developed for products and and, um, and 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 the like I think those give us an opportunity to ensure that we we do we can um, look towards a much much more standardized data set that we can and, and with clearer definitions that we we can use and accept um, so that, that's some of the that, that's that's on data standardization I think with um, the advent of fintech and, and new technologies, um, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, we are exploring ways in which we can use those new technologies to um, delve down into data and to try and identify anomalies so that we can um, start cleansing our data using those new technologies. Um, but I think you know that, that the work in, in, in that area has begun, but that we, I, think, I dare say that um, we have much further to go um, in, in order to utilize those technologies in, in, and, and to really see the benefits. And it's, it's not just about data quality, but I think it's also about 
about data enrichment and, and, and really seeing the true value in data because I think we all recognise we, we have lots of new entrants coming into the banking sector. Many of them are technology companies or companies that are uh, acutely aware of the, the benefits and, and the value in, in the customer data that banks have. And, and I don't think as an industry we've necessarily taken full advantage of, of that enriched data. Um, so that's something that we're, we're looking towards exploring and, and exploiting so that we can ultimately serve our clients um, much better because we have a deeper understanding and knowledge of, of, of their requirements and, and the way they want to do banking in the future. Mm. Yeah, and I think that um, actually speaks to Rajat's point as well about actually finding the business value and going beyond just the compliance. Yes. Uh, Ruth, what are, you, what are you seeing and how is City sort of reacting to trying to sort of surface that business value from the data itself? Well, I mean, data has always been top of our minds and I guess as a global institution it is more challenging to have complete visibility of the data across the board, across the different business silos. And I think what Richard just sort of alluded to is sort of, for example, how open banking in the UK and in Europe with PS2 is an example where external forces are coming in demanding our clients' data um, and sort of almost challenging us in, in, in the sense that we haven't created the right data-based and data-driven solutions and so third parties have to come along and do that, right? I think we need to be pretty realistic there as well. You referred, Richard, to the LEI initiative, the Legal Entity Identifier Initiative. I was sitting in the room in Brussels at SWIFT headquarters when that was first agreed um, with the EDM Council in the US on the back of the Dodd-Frank uh, legislation, which was in, in draft at the time, going through committee at the time. And nine years later, hmm. we're going to have it. So I think we need to be quite realistic about what reg tech can deliver technology to solve, to address the data problem, but the underlying data itself must be sound or we will only have a garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, a fully, More fully modern version thereof. Data cleansing. Fully agree, Peter. I mean, one of the points that I was going to raise was that I think it's, it's, it's um, laudable that the regulators are thinking about reg tech using technology and often regulators have been criticised by by bankers, by the industry, for, for, for lagging in terms of implementing regulations or the, the latest technology. So I think, I think it's helpful that they're, they're starting to think about this, they're, they're thinking about regulation, um, developing sandboxes to, to uh, um, allow um, new, new innovations in banking to be piloted and to be, to be tested. And so I think we should be, um, should, we should really acknowledge that. And, and oh, it's, it's, it's a totally agree. I think it's a very exciting time, and that, that uh, FCA Bank of England initiative in November last year I think is a, an absolute red letter day and hasn't been celebrated enough. In Chapter 4, we're going to look at uh, actually integrating regulatory workflow.